Hey everyone, I'm John. I'm going to talk about uh, manual segmentation. So the purpose of this talk is uh, to learn how to use the tools to do manual segmentation in ITK Snap and how to make custom labels, why that's important. Um, if we have time, I'll go into using 3D View to uh, assess segmentation quality. So the obvious question is why do we want to bother with manual segmentation? So a lot of you are probably familiar with some of the tools we have for automatically generating ROIs like Pick Atlas or Free Surfer. But for more difficult structures, more intricate structures, they're never going to be as accurate as a manual rater. And even if you're using any of these automatic methods, you need some way to, to prove that they're at least comparable to what a human rater could do. And as you get into more detailed structures, sometimes you just, you just have to do it by hand. It's too complicated for an automatic method. So a good example of this is the hippocampus. Um, this is an example. It's a truly 3D structure. It's got a difficult shape. It's on this kind of oblique angle, and it curves around. It's a deep brain structure, so it's hard to get a good automatic segmentation. So there's a lot of work. Um, a lot of people wind up having to do this manually. And even more detailed, the hippocampus is made up of distinct subfields which have uh, uh, different, different functions. I'm not going to get into the point of these functions, but the idea here is that there's these very detailed regions that you almost have to do uh, manually. And we're going to be focusing on the dentate gyrus, which is this oval in the middle, the portal monus, the CA structure, is this strip of tissue that wraps around it, and there's this band of white matter that separates the two. So for these exercises, that's all you need to know. And this is how it looks in a T2-weighted MR image, um, which is what we're going to be working with. Again, you have this oval shape in the middle, the dentate gyrus, this band of tissue around it, the CA, and this white matter that separates the two. The white matter looks dark in a T2-weighted image, but all you have to worry about is those three things. So the first thing to talk about, this is another T2 image of, the, of a coronal slice of the hippocampus and the subfields. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is custom labels. So Paul touched on this briefly about how you can rename labels. Um, the idea is that each label has its own integer value, and all that is is an identifier. So you would use these for uh, statistics, for instance. If you want to know the volume in the dentate gyrus, you'd count the number of voxels that are included under label 4, dentate gyrus. So the obvious issue here is if you have a segmentation like this where you have multiple labels, and you're either doing multiple subjects or you have multiple people working on these, you have to ensure that everybody's using, everybody's calling the same structures the same thing. Because if you mix up the labels, then there's no way to do any kind of group level analysis. Your statistics are meaningless. Um, and if you're just using these numbered identifiers, it's, it's really easy to make a mistake. So that's why uh, we have support for custom labels. You can make a file that stores the names of these things and then load that up as part of your uh, just as part of the initializing ITK snap. So you load the grayscale image, then you load the segmentation at the label file, and it ensures that you're working with the same labels for the same structures. So I'll go through a live demo of how to actually create these, but let me just show you. This is the window that we use for the exercise. Um, and Paul already showed this, but I'll go into more detail. So first you have the list of labels uh, by the ID and the name. So that's the energy value, the color and the description of the label. Um, the buttons at the bottom control adding new labels, copying them, deleting them. Um, label ID is the integer value. The description is the name of the label. The color just lets you change the color of the label. And opacity is uh, you know, how opaque or transparent it is. So we'll go through a live demo of this. And then you can do the exercise. So here is a coronal slice of the hippocampus, and this looks a lot like what I showed you before. And as I said, we're going to be segmenting dentate gyrus, the CA, and the white matter in between them. So remember this right here, this oval in the middle is the dentate gyrus. Tissue around it is the CA structure. And this dark band in the middle is the SRLM. So the first thing we want to do before we start segmenting is set up the labels so we're all working under the same, uh, the same structure here. So first you go to the label editor and I'm going to make label 1 the corner monus. So just change the description to CA. 
label two. CA means? Uh, corneal monus. That's the, the tissue around here that surrounds the, uh, the dentate. It's based on white matter, gray matter, and CSF and NFD based. Yes. It's, it's just based on the intensity there. Intensity. Yeah. Um, then we'll make the, uh, the SRLM is the uh, white matter separating the two. So we'll make that label two, just change the name. And for label three, we'll make that dentate. And here you can also change the color of the label. Um, it doesn't really have an impact on it except for being able to uh, differentiate them. So you, know, you don't want the labels to be too close in color because then it's easy to pick the wrong one. Uh, and here you can just change the color either by going through here or manually uh, changing the numbers. So we'll just make this uh, light blue. Oops. And when you're satisfied with the label, so then you can close this window and go to segmentation, save label descriptions, and here we'll call this subfield labels. So now we have a text file. <laughs> well, in theory, you'd have a text file that other people could load or you could load when you uh, when you next use it. I wonder if it's saved. So I guess I'll just quickly run through this again. So segmentation, save label descriptions. We'll give it a name. OK, so now we save the label file. So before we move on, um, you can look at exercise, the first exercise in session four, and try to replicate this and create your own custom label. And you'll use that for the next exercises. So just take five minutes to do that, um, and let me know if you need any help. So does everybody have the label file set up? OK. So next, we'll talk about actual labeling options. Um, and this is all under the segmentation options window. So the important thing here, we already talked about label opacity. I'll go more into that in the detail. And you have your basic undo and redo buttons like any other program. The, the important thing to take away here is these two options, the active drawing label and the draw over label. So active drawing label is the, the segmentation label that you're going to apply. And draw over is what labels you can apply that to. Um, so this might be a little confusing, but I'll show you all this in the demo and it, it should be clear. But this is an important thing to get. Uh, so the idea here is that you, you may not want to apply this label to everything. Um, so right now, draw over all labels means wherever you put your paintbrush, it's going to draw that new label. But you can have this draw over only particular labels, only clear label. So for instance, if you have, like we have the DG and the CA are very close together. And if you want to draw in that SRLM between them, you don't want to have to pick out each voxel. You can just sweep the brush over. So if you set draw over to just draw over clear voxels, you don't have to worry about overwriting anything. Um, another example is say you use the, you label dentate in all the slices, but you use the wrong label. You can just quickly select the correct label as the active drawing label and draw over your old label and it'll just replace it. So this will be more clear in the example. Um, I know that's not the best description. So the first tool I'm going to talk about is the polygon tool. And this is generally, when I do segmentation, this is what I use to cover large areas and do them pretty quickly. Um, so as you can see in this little image, and I'll show in the demo, you can just use your mouse to draw along and trace out an area and, uh, and fill that in. It just has this little four option uh, command thing. And I think the best way is to just, to just show this with the live demo. So I'll leave this slide up. This is what the uh, final segmentation is going to look like. The blue area here is the dentate gyrus. The red area is the CA wrapping around it. And this light blue is the uh, SRLM in between them. It's the white matter in between the two structures. Oh, 
still open. So I'm on slice 223 if you want to follow along. That's where the exercise should have put you. So the polygon tool is this thing up here in the main toolbox. Um, you can draw in two ways. You can either click point by point and it'll connect lines or you can just drag the mouse and once you're satisfied with the area that you want to segment, so I'll just do this quickly, then you right click to close the polygon and it gives you these options. Close loop and edit, I'll just show you that. So this lets me move around the points if I want to make adjustments and correct the segmentation a little. Um, then you can either, if you're not happy with it, you can clear the polygon and try again. Delete selected points will remove some of these points and connect those two lines. And if I hit accept, this will fill in the area with the label I have selected. So to show you again, I can quickly do the dentate. And then we want to fill in the SLRM in between the two. So here's what I'm, what I'm talking about with the active drawing label and draw over. So right now, the active drawing label is the SLRM, and I want to cover this area in between the two, in between Dente Gyrus and CA. And right now I'm drawing over all labels. So if I want to if I want to get this, you know, I have to draw this kind of careful area, and it's it's really difficult. And uh, when I accept it, it, it wipes out, it, you know, it overwrites my previous segmentation. So let's just undo that. Now if I select the draw over area instead to be clear label, so now SRLM will only be applied to, to voxels that don't have any other labels on top of them. So I can do this much faster. Just draw this wide area and it will only apply it to these clear voxels. Is that clear to everyone? And another point that's not always obvious, to erase uh, erase labels, you select your active drawing label to be clear label. And you, you basically draw the uh, what you want to remove. So let's say I am, I'm not happy with my dentate segmentation. I could select dentate, and now I'll only draw a clear label over dentate. So even if I select the whole image, it'll only erase that area. Okay. Now the other tool is the uh, paintbrush tool, and this is generally I generally use this for. Um, polishing segmentations for getting like fine edges or smaller regions. So there's a couple options here. You can control the shape of the brush, which will either be um, square, round, or adaptive. Um, and I'll, I'll show you all three of those. Size is just the width of the region. If you know a, a big brush will cover a wide region, you can do a small single voxel brush for very precise drawing. Um, a 3D brush will draw across multiple planes at the same time. Uh, the crosshair option it's just like wherever you draw the crosshair goes, so you can see it in all three planes. And isotropic, that only matters with, um, it, basically, if you're, it's a 3D drawing method. It, it really only matters for uh, anisotropic images, so we won't worry about that for now. And so I'm just going to navigate to the next slice and pretty much do the same thing. So if I quickly label. CA with the polygon tool. Now I can use the paintbrush to refine this. So if I pick a very small one, so now I just have this little one voxel paintbrush and I can use this to fill in these areas that I missed. Uh, another good feature about the paintbrush, so when you left click it draws and when you right click it'll erase whatever label you're currently using. So, you know, if you misclick, you can just right click and quickly quickly delete whatever's there. Um, now the width, 
So if I blow this up to eight, you can see now I have this big, this big paintbrush to draw with. Uh, and the shape, it just, just changes the shape of the brush. Now adaptive is a little different. So a, the adaptive brush will take, it measures the intensity of whatever's under the cursor and only segments voxels that are of similar intensity. So see here we have this, these uh, darker voxels and here they're, they're lighter. So if we segment right in the middle, it's only going to catch the voxels that are similar to the ones under the cursor. So this is a way to quickly do segmentation of a similar region using the paintbrush. You mean for the adaptive brush? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, there are these two parameters. Oh, yeah. I can off the top of my head remember. <laughs> but they, yeah, this way they go, but you, you just play with them and adjust this. Sorry? About the adaptive brush? Okay, sure. So let's just clear this. So the adaptive brush will segment whatever's under the cursor is the center of the brush, and it'll only segment voxels that are of a similar intensity to that. So here you have you have this uh, white matter, this dark tissue on the outside of the CA, and inside it's a much lighter intensity. So if you click right on the center of that, see it'll only catch the voxels that are similar to what's under the cursor. So it won't get the white matter. That intensity can be set. That's what these yeah. granularity and smoothing oh, tools. In between, mm -hmm. lower and upper. Mm -hmm. um, another thing to mention something Paul talked about is that you can uh, toggle the segmentation on and off and also change the opacity. So this is important because you want to see what you're drawing on top of. Um, you know, if you, if you have it turned all the way up and you draw over, you don't really necessarily know where to make these bounds or make these changes. So you can toggle this on and off with the S key or use A and D to make it uh, more translucent or more opaque. When I'm, when I'm doing segmentation, I usually keep it pretty translucent so I can still see the anatomical features underneath the label. So here you can see that maybe CA continues in a little bit more than I have here, so I could uh, just use the paintbrush to adjust that. Something like that. And I'll try to give you plenty of time for the exercise to work through this. I know it's kind of a lot. So now we can move on to the exercises. And we'll go back to 3D rendering if we have time. So let's start with 4B. 4B is just using the, uh, the polygon tool. All right. OK, sorry about the delay. Um, so this, this segmentation, this is pretty much the same thing that you've been doing the exercises, just with a few more slices. So if we select the 3D window, which is the lower left-hand corner, and hit Update Mesh, it'll render the segmentation in three dimensions. And this is useful for a couple reasons. Um, the main thing that I usually use this for is to check the consistency of the segmentation slice to slice and make sure you know, it anatomically makes sense and things line up. So. For instance, you can see here, this boundary right here, you have a couple of these points that stick out. There's a lot of unevenness between the boundary, right? And if you go back and look at the slices, then you can see, like, you know, if you scroll slice to slice, you can see, okay, there's, there's some error here in terms of what I'm calling this boundary of CA. And it, it might not be obvious when you're doing this slice to slice, but then you can go into the 3D view and, uh, and quickly check this out. And another important feature of this, uh, particularly when you have one of these multi-label objects, is that the, um, the label opacity can be changed. So it, you have to do this through the label editor, but you can edit the opacity of the 3D image. 
So if I select DG, for instance, and turn the opacity off, I can examine the rest of the structure without that being in the way and see you know, what's going on in the internal part here and how this entry point looks and if it's consistent. Mm, what do you mean? So if you go to the display options here, so you see how this green is kind of uh, partially oh. uh, destroyed by the rendering? So there's some, by default, there's some smoothing that happens when 3D rendering is done. And under the display options, 3D rendering tab, you can turn the smoothing off. And then you sort of, you get sort of virtually every voxel that's in the segmentation shows up. So for these kind of fine scale right. structures, you might want to use that. Right. So, so just to reiterate, when you have a structure that's very tiny, like in some cases, this is only one voxel thick, smoothing is just going to wipe that out. Um, so you can use the display options to turn that off. Uh, so why don't we quickly do exercise uh, 4D, which can only take a minute, You're just rendering the image. And while you're doing that, I can talk about the, uh, the last thing here. Uh, it's not in the slide, so I'll just mention it briefly. Um, so another, one of the important things when you're doing segmentation, sorry, this mouse is so sensitive, is that you can use all three of these orthogonal views uh, at the same time. So this, this is not a great example because this is an ex vivo image on a really powerful magnet, so the, the you know, resolution is amazing, the intensity is great. But when you're working on a typical clinical in vivo image, you know, 3T, uh, hippocampus or something, you're, you're not going to have this kind of quality. So you might see certain features of the structure better in the coronal view and uh, other parts better, you know, in this sagittal view. For instance, in the hippocampus, the, the main body section here is really easy to see in coronal, but once you get in the more complicated, like the head region, it's this big curved thing, it's easier to see in sagittal. So what you can do is do, you see here, like it, I've done several slices in coronal, and then when you look at the sagittal view, you can see how they appear in these other views. So now you have a clear idea of, okay, this thing in the middle is dentate gyrus, and that's how it appears in sagittal, whereas these are the CA structures on the outside. And just to wrap up, label files are important to ensure consistency between your own segmentations and across users, so you should always create a label file and make that your first step, you know, as soon as you load the grayscale image. Um, the active label and draw over tool is really powerful to make sure you don't waste time like filling in details in between or to correct errors. Uh, polygon tool is used for segmenting large areas quickly and the paintbrush is more for refinement and 3D view ensures slice-to-slice -slice consistency.